ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونؤمن به ولا توكل عليه ونبلى من شر انفسنا ما سيت يحملنا يهدي الله فلا مضل له فمن يضل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون ان قال حج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر اموري متداتها وكل متداتها بدا وكل بدا دلاله وكل دلاله في النار يا الذين امنوا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خلق الله عدم على صورته ويقول الله عز وجل في القران الكريم Brothers and sisters, we praise Allah the Almighty. We believe in Him, we trust in Him, we bear witness. Nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's messenger and his slave and the seal of the prophets. We ask Allah the Almighty to guide us we ask Allah the Almighty to bless his messenger Muhammad alayhi salat wa salam and his family and his companions, all of them, ameen. Brothers and sisters, before I give this khutbah, I want to begin with a dua of the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam. Allahumma inni a'udhubaka min ilmin la yanfa'u. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. If we're going to sit together for five minutes or five hours, if we're going to speak about knowledge, it must be beneficial. So that when you walk out of this masjid, there's something from Allah and His Messenger that's going to benefit you. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me to articulate on my tongue what I feel in my heart. Someone once said that the most important knowledge you can have is the knowledge of yourself. While I agree that the knowledge of self is very important, but the most important knowledge you can have is the knowledge of Allah. So today in this khutbah, I want to focus on two things. Number one, I want to focus on Allah. Lahul Asma'ul Husna. He has the most beautiful names. And then I want to focus on us. I don't believe that you should listen to a khutbah just to get information, but to do something. So that when we walk out of the masjid, we have something to do. The knowledge is supposed to produce something. I remember I used to be a Christian. Allah blessed me to become a Muslim in 1969. I used to read the Bible. And when I became Muslim, I was speaking to a Christian audience. And I told them that they had something in their Bible that we don't find in the Quran. This is years ago. And in the Bible it said that God created man in his image. I told the Christians we don't, I, I was excited about that verse, but I said we don't find that in the Islam. But years later, the more I studied, the more I found out that is exactly, not in Quran, in Sunnah. Allah mentioned Quran about the, the Quran, مُصَدِّكًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ It is a confirmation of the scripture that went before. So the Islam that we have, it confirms what Isa alayhi salat was salam, and Musa and Ibrahim and Nuh, all of the prophets before them, it confirms what they say. In this hadith here, maybe Muslims get scared, but what I'm saying, mutafakun alayhi, is an Al-Bukhari hadith and Muslim hadith. Khalaqallahu Adam ala suratihi. Allah created Adam in his image. So today, inshallah, I want to deal with two things. I want to deal with Allah and I want to deal with us as human beings. Who are we? 
I'm sitting in my office one day and I'm reading the Quran and I come across this ayat. And there is not a leaf that falls except Allah knows. Not a leaf that falls except Allah knows it. I walk out of my masjid and I walk a long block and I'm reciting this ayat. Not a leaf falls except Allah knows it. And as I'm walking, I'm noticing on the ground thousands of leaves. And I said, you mean to tell me Allah knows every leaf that falls? I did some research. I want to know how many trees are there on this earth. And according to the scientists, over three trillion trees. Some of them have as many as 350,000 leaves on one tree. And you mean to tell me Allah knows every leaf? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah is so great, so magnificent. We have to understand that there is a major difference between Al Khalik, the Creator, and Makhluk, the creation. And we are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but we're not just any kind of creation, we're very special. What do you mean, special? The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Abdullah wa Abdurrahman. The names most loved by Allah is Abdullah and Abdurrahman. Go around the world anywhere. Begin with Kenya. Begin with my country, the United States. Begin with UK. Begin with any country in the world, any Muslim country, and you will find out that the most popular name is Muhammad. Everybody in the family, everybody knows Muhammad. We love the Prophet. But the name most loved by Allah, Abdullah or Abdurrahman. We are the slaves of Allah. What make us special? We are the slaves of Allah. I have not created the jinn and the humans except to worship me. That's our special relationship. And the name Abdullah makes us to know that we the slaves of Allah. Whatever we do, we do because Allah orders us to do it. And when we refrain from doing something, we refrain because Allah refrained us from doing it. Allah makes halal. Allah makes haram. So this human being, who are we? Let's take a few ayahs from the Quran. If Allah created Adam in his image, what make human beings different? لَقَدْ قَرَمْنَا بَنِي Adam. Allah says in Quran, Allah has honored the children of Adam. Who are the children of Adam? النَّاسُ كُلُّهُمْ بَنُوا Adam وَأَدَمْ مِنْ تُرَاب All of mankind, every human being are the children of Adam. And Adam was created of dust. Me, Saraj Wahaj, I have many identities. I'm not just one, I have many identities. Anna Aswad. I am black. And you know what? I love being black. I love my black skin and my kinky hair and my broad nose and my thick lips. I love it. I can't wait, wait to wake up every morning black. But why? Because Allah said, It is Allah who created you in the wombs as he pleased. If Allah is pleased to make me a black man, I'm pleased to be a black man. Ana Amrikiyun, I'm American, I'm born there. Ana Afrikiyun, I'm African. Ana Bashar, I'm a human being. But the most important thing, I'm a Muslim. Why? Because not one black person will be in Jannah because they're black. 
Not one white person will be in hell because they're white. No, no. Not one woman will be in gender because she's a woman. Not one woman will be in the hellfire because she's a woman. No, it's, a, it's deen, it's iman, it's taqwa, it's faith. So alhamdulillah, who are we? And nasu kulluhum benu Adam, Adam and Turab. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, he talked about the dignity of a human being. Every human being have a right, a house to live in. Every human being have a right food to eat. Every human being has a right to drink water. Every human being has a right to wear clothing. You ever study us, study the human being? Look at us. Look at the human being. We eat. Every human being have to eat. Everything alive have to eat. If you don't eat, you die. And we must make sure that everybody eats. But look how we eat, what we eat. Notice the difference between human beings and animals. I have a cat. Some of you may have cat, I don't know. But look what the cats eat. They eat insects, they eat mice, they eat rats. There's something a human being can't imagine. Human beings, not only do we eat, we cook it, we fry it, we broil it, we put season on it. That's because you're a human being, you're different. Look at the animals. What homes do they have? They live on the earth. But you, human beings, you build homes on the earth. Look at the clothing that we have. All of this, why? Allah has honored the, the children of, of, of Adam. This is how we are. We are something special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How special are we? أَلَمْ تُرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَكَرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْعَرْضِ Don't you see? Allah has subjected for you everything in the heavens and earth for you, man. Why? Because you are the creation of Allah. خَلَقَ اللَّهَ آدَمُ آدَمُ عَلَى سُورَاتِ Allah created Adam in his own image. Think about that. I went to Australia. My wife. And when we landed in Australia, we went to the luggage claim to get our luggage. And there was a dog there, and the security man was smelling everyone's luggage. And they were smelling my wife's luggage. And I got nervous. And the reason I got nervous, because I know that the dog, they're looking for one of three things. Number one, they're looking for drugs. So I started looking at my wife. Or number two, they're looking for explosives, bombs. So I started walking away from my wife. Or number three, they're looking for food. In Australia, they don't allow you to come into the country with food. And for sure, my wife, she had food in her luggage. But look at the dog. Look at the dog. Dogs have a sense of smell millions of times more than human beings. They can smell what we cannot smell. Incredible. Can I tell you something about the human beings? If I would ask you how many people on the earth, you would say seven billion people. Seven billion people. Do you know? that every human being have a distinct fingerprint. Everyone different. Yours different from his, and his is different from his, and everyone different. Not only that, you may not know this. I met an Imam Saad from Medina, and he has a very unique talent. He's able to imitate 100 of the best reciters of the Qur'an around the world. And if he's reciting Qur'an from your one you love, you wouldn't know the difference. But the fact of the matter, every human being have a distinct sound. Experts can tell. One more. Did you know 
that human beings, every one of them, seven billion of them, have unique handwriting. Experts can tell. They can look at your handwriting and say, oh, yeah, it belongs to Fulan. They know. And one more. One more. Every human being have a distinct smell. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, go to Surah to Yusuf. When Yaqub said, I smell the scent of Yusuf. Why? Every human being, every one of them have a unique smell. Why? Because you are unique. You are the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah made you unique. One more. If I would ask you here in this city about animals and I ask you which is the biggest animal known to man, you would say blue whale. Blue whale. One hundred feet long, weighing 200 tons, with a tongue the size of an elephant and the heart the size of an, of a, of an automobile. And this huge animal lives to be 85 years. Listen to what Allah said in the Quran. And there is not an animal on the earth except Allah has taken upon himself to give it his sustenance. So this blue whale, 100 feet long, 200 tons, has to eat. What does it eat? It eats a little shrimp-like animal called krail. And how many do they eat? A day, 40 million quail, weighing four tons, and yet Allah feeds it. Why? Because Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. But what about man? What about us? 2008, and you can look this up, Imam, in the state of Nebraska, Nebraska is a state in the United States, a man, state legislature, named Ernie Chambers, sued God in a court of law, saying, seeking a permanent injunction against God's harmful activities. Astaghfirullah. You're going to sue God? You're going to charge God? So the judge threw out the case. They said that they threw it out because they can find no known address for God. It comes to this ayat of the Quran. You see, brothers and sisters, people, they don't know about Allah. They want to blame Allah. Something happens to you, your mother die, your father die, your children die, your brother die, your imam die, your leaders die. All of this, people around the earth die, and they want to blame Allah. I heard a minister preaching one day, he said, if I were God, I would have done so and so. No. If you were Allah, you would have done exactly what Allah did. That's what makes him who he is. So Allah put it this way. He, Allah, will not be questioned. But they will be questioned. We will be questioned. So brothers and sisters, what I'm saying today, I just want to show you who we are, who Allah is. Sheikh, when I was in uh, elementary school, I don't know what you call it, but I was in the third grade, which means I was like eight years old. And they taught us a song. I never forget the song. I don't know who wrote it, but I do remember it said like this. I told you I never forgot it. For the first time in my life, I forgot it. 
getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. For me, everything in life is about getting to know Allah. Getting to know Allah and then getting to know ourselves. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. We must always remember there is nothing like Allah. I'm going to give an example. I told you that Allah knows every leaf that falls. It means that Allah is aware of everything. Nothing escapes Him. One of the greatest prophets, one of the five great prophets, Noah, Abraham, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad, والسلام, the five greatest prophets. One of them, Musa. More Musa's name is mentioned in Quran more than any other prophet. He was known to be one of the smartest people. He's given a khutbah to Bani Israel. And a man, he stood up and said, uh, oh Musa, is there anyone on earth smarter than you? He said, La. One narration said, Who is the smartest person on earth? He said, Anna, I am. No big deal. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a big deal. So Allah revealed to Musa, my servant al khidr he knows more than you. To the credit of Musa, despite all the knowledge that he had, he wanted to get more. He wanted to learn from al khidr And you know the story. He, he, he teaches them, uh, go on a journey and he teaches. Let me tell you the first lesson that Musa learned, subhanAllah. Allah is so great, Allahu Akbar. When I think about the greatness of Allah, He is incredible. Musa and Khidra is walking near the edge of the, of the river and there's a boat. And there's a bird on the edge of the boat. And the bird dips its dip, its peak in the water. And Khidra said, Ya Musa, inna ilmi uh, 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 he said, um, Ya, Ya Musa, um, Inni ilmin min ilmin la yalmuhullah la ta'lamuha. Wa innaka ilmin min ilmin la yalmuhullah la alamuha. Oh Moses, I have a knowledge that Allah taught me, you don't know it. And you have a knowledge that Allah taught you, I don't know it. He said, Moses, my example. Your example and my example and all the people on earth, knowledge compared to Allah is like that water in the beak of that bird compared to the ocean. So no matter how much you think you know, you know little compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, not only that, get old and you will find out that you lose everything because that's the way it is. I said, Allah make it. Allah humble you. Every soul shall taste of death. So whenever you think you saw big shot, Allah show you who the big shot is. Allah make you sick, show you who the big shot is. Allah make you homeless, show you who the big shot is. Allah test you with many, many things. You get sick. Allah show you to let you know. And even when the Prophet والسلام, died, Umar took out his sword and said, Wallahi, ma mata Rasulullah. I swear by Allah, the Prophet is not dead. And here come, uh, here come uh, Abu Bakr. He said to him, Sit. He said, Men kana ya'budu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa qada Muhammad mata. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ حَيٌّ لَا يموت. Those who used to worship Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But those who worship Allah, Allah is alive and shall never die. 
كل نفس دائكة الموت وما كان لنفس أن تموت إلا بإذن الله كتاب مؤجلة no soul can die except by the commission of Allah it's written in a book so we're human beings and we have limitations but also Allah has honored us I want to conclude with this and hope that you get it you are somebody special you're the slaves of Allah act like it act like you're the slaves of Allah if you are the slaves of Allah what are we supposed to be doing on this earth you want to hear a big spectacle that happens sometime in the history of, of, of the earth and in the universe something happened was a big spectacle unbelievable فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَاكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ وَسَفَسَجَدَ الْمَلَاكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ All of the angels bow down to Adam. All of them? Yes. Jibrayel? Yes. Mikael? Yes. Malikul Mount? Yeah. Every angel, when Allah ordered them to bow down to Adam, Every one of them bowed down. Why? Because Adam, human beings are special. They're honored. Everybody wants this, what we have. With Kala Rabukal al Malaika, the Inni Jailun, Phil Adi Khalifa, Kalu, Wata Jalu, Fiha, Men, you see, do Fiha, where Yasfiku Dima, where Nahnu Nusabi, who be Handika, one who Kadisula, Kala Inni Alamu Mala Tailamun. Angels, they don't disobey Allah. Angels do whatever Allah command them to do, they do it, but not human beings, not this special creature, this Khalifa. You do, you have the ability to even disobey Allah. The angels don't have it in their DNA to disobey Allah. They can't do it. They don't know how to disobey Allah. Oh, but you, Allah's special creature, Allah tell you to do something and you don't do it. You, Allah's special creature, Allah orders you to do the good and we don't do it. He forbid you to do the haram and we do it. I was in New York City, uh, a, 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 a store that I go to every week to get my newspapers. Muslim store, owned by Muslims and the, uh, the workers are Muslim. One day I go into the store and I read this sign and the sign said, no alcohol sold here. I said, Allahu Akbar, because in New York City, we have thousands of, of, of grocery stores. Muslims own thousands of stores, and they sell alcohol, they sell cigarettes, they sell beer, they sell everything, they sell what's haram. So when I go to a Muslim store and say, no alcohol sold here, I said, Allahu Akbar. Until Imam, I looked closer, it said, no alcohol sold here on Sundays. Before 1 p.m. Are you kidding me? I found out recently I had no idea how much cigarettes cost. Cigarettes is haram. Sorry, brothers, I don't mean to get into your business. Cigarettes is haram. No question about that. World Health Organization said that if the nations of the world do nothing about it, by the end of the 21st century, one billion people would have died as a result of smoking cigarettes. How you think smoking is, is, is permissible? So I don't know how much cigarettes cost. So I went into a Muslim store. I wanted to find out. I know he sold cigarettes. How much cigarettes? He said, this is US, $10.49 a pack. What? What? Are you kidding me? He said, yeah, Sheikh. You know, my biggest seller is cigarettes. I would hope one day that we would have Muslim stores and a non-Muslim come and say, please give me some pork, some kanzir, or give me some cigarettes, or some, some khamr, or some wine, alcohol. The Muslims say, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones, I know you want cigarettes, but I don't sell it because it's not good for you. If the Muslims would do that and be an example of the people in the society, you see it'll be a major change, and all over the world be a major change because the people see that the Muslims are really concerned. So what am I saying? I'm saying, what are we going to do as Muslims here in Kenya? It's not good enough 
to make prayer five times a day? Yes, it's good. Yes, it's good. You know, every once in a while, the people in Jannah can talk to the people in hell. And the people in hell can talk to the people in Jannah. I give you one example. There's many. I give you one. The people in Jannah will look down at the people and say, Miss Salaka Kumfi Sakhar. Miss Salaka Kumfi What are you doing in the hellfire? We are not those who used to make salat. I am amazed that there are Muslims who don't make salat. Are you kidding me? You don't make what? You don't get up for fajr? You too tired? You too tired to get up and pray to Allah who gives you life? You too tired? We have. We're going to be held accountable. And then they continue. And we didn't feed the poor people. That's part of your job. If Allah feed the blue whale, if Allah feed all the animals, how is it that human beings suffer? They have nothing to eat. You tell me. Allah's held, holding us accountable. How come you didn't feed that person? That priest, that person died of hunger. How come you didn't feed them? Don't ask Allah. Ask yourself, how come you didn't feed them? Yes. Yes. Our job, Khalifa on the earth. Prove it. Prove that you're the slaves of Allah. Prove it. And that's what we're here to do. As Muslims, we want to be the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. We are this special creation. Let's go out in the streets everywhere and give the people this message of Islam. Wallahi, they need it. They don't know that they don't need it, but they need it. A lot of our family members in the streets, a lot of them are hungry. More than that, they're hungry for this knowledge that will save them in this life and also in the hereafter. With the slaves of Allah. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ Adam عَلَى suratihi. Allah created Adam in his image. Let us act like we're the servants of Allah, the Almighty. I ask Allah, the Almighty, to help us, forgive us our sins, and guide us on Surat al-Mustaqeem. We ask Allah the Almighty to strengthen us and help the Muslims around the world who suffer. We ask Allah the Almighty to help those Muslims in Burma, those who suffer, those Muslims in Syria, Muslims in Palestine, Muslims in Yemen, Muslims all over the earth, earth in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Sudan, and all over the world. We ask Allah to help them. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا طعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا سران كما حملت الذين من قبلنا ربنا لا تحملنا ما لا طاقة على النعبة وفر عنا وقفر لنا ورحمنا وعند مولانا فنسون على الكامل كافرين والحمد لله رب العالمين.